Hi, and welcome to this Dittmer Knittery video. Welcome to Dittmer Knittery. My name is Bev, and you'll find my contact information in the description box below. On my channel, I usually talk about yarn and yarn-related subjects. Um, whether you are a new viewer or a returning viewer, thank you for being here. I'm very glad you're here today. On my last video, I showed you some things that are nearing completion. They are uh, what we call, what I call, ready for hot water. And if you haven't watched that, go back and watch my uh, video right before this one, probably last week. Um, and those bags and hat that I show in that uh, last video that I did, they've come a long way toward completion, like I said. And so now they wait. Now they wait for felting days, which happen maybe once a month or so. I do hot water felting and I might be able to do one to two products um, in a weekend. I could probably do more than that, but it, it's just, it's tiring. So usually about once a month, I have a day where I heat up the water and I um, hot water felt my items. And I have shown that on my channel before and I will probably show it again. Uh, so you'll see what I mean if you're curious. So anyway, all that to say, yes, these things are getting close to being done. And so it's time to start a new project. Now, that's not to say I don't have some whips. I do. I have works in progress, but it's still time. It's time to start this next project. And since I'm right here at the beginning of this project, I'm still in the planning stages, I decided to take you along with me from start to finish for the creation of this bag. Now, this is not a tutorial, not at all, not a tutorial, but it will include machine and hand knitting, seaming uh, some knitted fabric, weaving in ends, picking up knitted stitches, knitting I-cord, and so I hope to show the hot water felting when I get to that stage of this project. Then after that, when it's dry and shaped, I intend to embellish this particular bag with needle felting. Um, so all those things and methods and techniques and maybe more. But like I said, not a tutorial, just um, bringing you along on my project. Um, I have some notebooks that I always make notes about my knitting projects, my machine knitting projects. Um, as you heard me say on my latest video, I really don't keep very good track when I'm just um, knitting or crocheting by hand, but on the machine, I have made good notes and, and I need them. I rely on them and I will go look at my notes, find something similar shape and size to what I want to make um, because I have made a few bags now, and I have so I have some good notes I can rely on. I can go back and find something similar um, to the size and shape I'd like to make and begin there and start making some notes about how I want to cast onto the machine, how many stitches, and uh, where I want to start with my colors and go from there. Today, um, I have a video about the very beginning of the process, the planning part. So I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back at the end. All the knitting I've shown you today, with the exception of the hat, has been hand by knitted by hand. This is my knitting machine. Um, you can't quite see all of it, but I will be showing more of it in the future. And I'm going to talk about that. I'm, going, I'm planning a project that I'm going to make on the machine. And I hope to uh, make these videos and take you along on my progress because it's the kind of project where I use quite a few different skills, the machine, hand, and then at the very end, uh, then I, of course I will hot water felt it. And then at the end, I'll probably embellish it with needle felting and perhaps attach some buttons. So it's a good project. It's a project that, you know, starts with the planning and it takes a while to complete. And I love the process. And again, I thought I would just maybe take you along a little bit. I've had my knitting machine. It is a silver reed LK150. I've had it, I believe, since November of 2019. This is one of the first panels that I made on the machine. I knitted the green and blue panel 
I hot water felted the panel itself by hand, and then I embellished it with needle felting. And at the time when I made this, I didn't think much of it. In fact, I left it unembellished. I had the blue and green piece sitting around for quite a long time before one day I decided, in fact, I saw a picture of a maypole and I was um, inspired and I decided to depict a maypole on this piece of felt and I did. And I was really happy with the result at that point. It was, um, like I said, one of the first panels that I made on the knitting machine. And it's my first attempt to depict people. And I think I did. I think they look like people. And the longer I have it, the more I look at it, the more treasured it becomes to me. And I may have shown it before, and I may have even talked about it before. Someone recently asked to buy it. And I realized that I really didn't want to sell it. I couldn't sell it. That there were too many important elements here first for me and successes for me, for me to let it go uh, for any kind of a reasonable price. <laughs> so I decided to keep it. But the person said they really wanted it. Could I make one like it? And I said, I can't duplicate it. Of course, I can't make one exactly like it, but I'm glad to uh, make something similar. And I offered to make this, uh, like I said, it's a panel, it's a tapestry, and I will uh, hang it uh, with a backing and a sawtooth hanger. Uh, it will get hung in my living room here very soon. Um, a short tangent, I'm really bad about putting things up on the wall. I'm really bad about displaying things. And recently, I have um, been putting things up on my walls and doing decorating in my home. So this is getting ready to go up actually in my living room. And so I'll get to look at it uh, every day and people who come to my home will get to see it. Anyway, back to the person who wanted to purchase the item and offered, um, you know, if I asked if I would make something similar and I agreed to do so. And she said she wanted a bag, which of course is my specialty. And I said a bag or a tapestry, either one I would do. And I haven't really heard from her since, but I decided to go ahead and do it because I've always wanted to do this again. Ever since I had this success, um, I've always wanted to do this Maypole theme again. I just love it. Um, so I decided to go ahead and make a bag. Now I have some of this green yarn. I have that. I do not know what it is. I know it's wool. I know it felt. I've used it. I know who gave it to me, but I don't remember much about it other than that it's wool and it's green. I don't have any more of the blue of the background. Now, I do have most of these colors that I used for needle felting. So I'm looking forward to being able to um, create a similar scene. Um, so there begins my plan. Next thing, I'm going to figure out what yarn I'm going to use. I'm going to try to use something that I already have in my stash really don't want to buy special yarn for this. And my first thought was to go ahead and use this green and find a blue to go with it. But it's it's kind of, um, um, <laughs> it's not bulky, but it's it's definitely a at least a four weight, maybe a heavy four. Um, that weight of yarn doesn't work as well on the machine as lighter, weights, lighter weight yarns, which is something I learned. Um, it works, but it works better if it's a little bit lighter weight yarn. So I've decided to use some Knit Picks palette yarn that I have. And I'm going to show you the yarns that I've selected. These are just some of the yarns that I have to select from. This is most of my wool yarn. It is all wool, and it is, like I said, most of my wool yarn. There may be a few skeins here and there, project in progress and, and things like that. So I just don't have a blue in the right weight, in the right texture to put with that green. And that's why I decided to go with the Knit Picks palette. And I'll show you my Knit Picks palette. It's to the left. And let's get a little bit closer. So it's this that's piled on top, all those greens, and then
those cubes with lamb chop and the adjoining cubes to the left are all Knit Picks palette yarn. Yeah, a whole section for the greens. There is some larger yarn there in the background. The um, lightweight yarn, the fingering weight yarn, or uh, is the palette Knit Picks yarn. Here you see the Knit Picks palette yarns that I've selected to make the bag. I often uh, like to use a dark color to make the bottom part of the bag and me maybe even the top strip and the strap. We'll see, but it probably won't be the solid color green and blue like the tapestry is, but I will probably blend these colors as I go along to create a playful background scene. And then, um, like I said, I'm going to do this on the machine and I hope to be able to share my progress with you as I go along. The first thing I had to do was um, pick the yarns and be sure that I have enough of each color. And I have um, more of each of these colors, maybe even that one, but I won't need a lot of that one. So I may not have more of that, but I have, I have ample yarn to make a, a you know, a purse-sized bag. Uh, maybe say 10 or 12 inches by 10 or 12 inches it will turn out to be. Um, so these are the colors I've selected. The next thing I'm going to do is wind all the yarns on my ball winder. Now these have already been wound and they're probably fine to use the way they are, but these will need to be wound on the ball winder. But these, um, that one is, uh, has already been wound on the ball winder and probably will be just fine. So they need to be in cakes like that to um, work on the knitting machine because it needs to sit stable and the yarn needs to flow out evenly. I will probably, I will be holding two strands of this yarn together, which allows me, like I said, to create blends from these yarn. I know that this works on this knitting machine. So these two strands of fingering weight yarn work really well on the knitting machine. And I have been doing uh, some hand work lately. I've, I've done the hand knitting and of course I do all the crochet by hand and my hands have been holding up well, but um, I really enjoy using the machine. It's a lot of fun. It's a different thing to do. It rests my hands, it saves time. And there's still quite a lot of hand work involved in making a bag, a whole bag. Um, even when I do some of the work on the machine, there's still some handwork involved. And I enjoy doing that when I get to the point that I'm finishing it off, finishing it off with um, the handheld knitting needles. Usually, I usually use circular knitting needles. So there are my color selections. Next, I'll be winding the yarn. And then hopefully, I will show you the progress when I get started and take you along on this project with me. So, I, I hope you liked that. I hope you enjoyed that video. And I hope you'll come back for the next video and that you'll um, follow along with me with this project. Um, and, you know, keep in touch. Make comments. Let me know what you think. Um, maybe you want to stay around and watch some more videos. If you didn't see, like my said, I said, my previous video or some other previous videos, stick around a little bit. And if you enjoy, please like. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Share. Comment. And thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself and take care of each other.